Wow, Goldie. <laughs> Good to have you on stage. I think it's been a year and a half or two years. Yeah, it's been, been a, it's been some time. How are you doing? All You're good? Doing well, thanks. Uh, Vikram raised some pertinent points. Uh, how are we going to uh, get in that direction? What's your perspective? Sorry, I didn't... Vikram raised some pertinent points. Yeah. So do you see that working as an industry? Uh, first of all, welcome everybody and thank you for being here and thank you for having me on the stage. Uh, yeah, Vikram's always been uh, someone who is uh, always seen beyond and, you know, he's been a kind of a visionary in his uh, genre of filmmaking. And uh, see, my approach to VFX is a little different because I learnt it a little differently. Uh, it's not so hands-on as Vikram is uh, at the moment. But I believe in a lot of... Uh, I believe in using VFX very minimalistically, you know, only when it is required and when it's not achievable live, you know. Uh, I'm a big believer in as much as live as possible. Uh, of course, I saw some, I saw a fantastic reel by some studio now, uh, sorry, Phantom Studio now. And obviously you can't get those images of domes crashing and, you know, missiles launching and all that kind of stuff. But yes, as much as possible, you know, get it in camera, you know, get it live and enhance it and nuance it by uh, VFX. That's the schooling that I uh, subscribe to. Uh, it is sometimes more expensive, you know, it is a bit more cumbersome, but uh, there are uh, certain imperfections uh, that you get, you capture on camera, and uh, you know, all the filmmakers here will understand that, which make it perfect, you know, uh, which you try and emulate in a VFX, you know, oh, it's Let's make it a bit imperfect, you know. Uh, but as much as you get on, get on camera, that's the way forward, I feel, you know. And uh, what I agree with Vikram is that uh, it is a tool for storytelling. Uh, I have personally, uh, you know, when I made Drona in 2008, it released, so six and seven. Uh, I haven't seen that long of a journey. I'm a little junior to Vikram. But uh, when we were trying to do Drona in, uh, you know, six, seven, eight, uh, it was, uh, you know, so it was just crazy because, you know, it was just probably my ignorance made me make it, you know. Uh, had I been better informed, I wouldn't have att attempted it. But I'm glad I did, you know. And uh, I meet a lot of, uh, you know, uh, artists now all over the place, you know, in different studios who have done a little bit of work on it because we, uh, it was the first time our film was working with six, seven studios. We, have a, we had a VFX producer and supervisor and we went about it in a very organized fashion. We had, at that time, you know, we, we were talking about like some 2,000 or 3,000 shots which are like, oh my God and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was an interesting time and the evolution of, you know, uh, from even having to uh, preview a VFX shot, you know, was a task. Uh, we did not have, uh, collab uh, you know, correctly colored, or, you know, uh, collaborated, um, you know, screens uh, for everybody, you know. And uh, very few, very rarely take a, pi take a piece printed out you know, th see it in the long throw and then figure out whether the shot's working or no. So then we actually, Future Works, we actually forced them to put a barcode projector and uh, updated that whole pipeline, got that whole uh, 4K scanning in at that point, you know. And that's how, uh, you know, it was one of the few uh, stepping stones of VFX in, uh, in India at that time. So uh, we started previewing every shot in a DI suite, which obviously is the norm and that's the way it should be done. And uh, not every shot, but at least big, the big shots, you know. Uh, so from there to now, you know, it's been a, you know, more than a quantum leap of, you know, crazy, uh, you know, uh, miles, you know. So it's good, it's great, you know, the Indian artists are so talented, you know. And uh, there's so much of uh, culture in India, you know, and uh, so much of uh, storytelling uh, that has been set through visuals uh, from our mythology to our, you know, uh, 
you know, just generally, you know, we, we it's a lot of visual, uh, you know, interpretation, you know. And I think that, you know, it's ingrained, you know, uh, uh, in us to tell stories visually and the VFX, uh, uh, the people who get into the VFX and the artists that are, that are into it, um, really get a big advantage uh, on that because it's there in their subconscious as well. So, yeah, I, th I think I meandered a bit. No, but that's <laughs> okay. I mean, listen, that's what creativity yeah. is all about. You slowly unravel yeah. the thoughts that you have yeah. and expound and then you get to the meat. Yeah. So, no, so, so I, did, I did it twice. I did it once in, uh, on film, for film with uh, Drona, you know, which was, uh, I've been told, one of the first few that had so much VFX in it. Uh, and then I did it again with uh, Linear TV, with uh, a show called Aram, you know. Uh, unfortunately, both those uh, projects failed, you know, uh, commercially. But it did uh, open doors to a lot of, uh, you know, quality VFX in films and quality VFX on television, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, interesting, you know. Uh, stories learned, I mean, lessons learned are that, you know, at the end of the day, we get fascinated by VFX and the abilities that we can, uh, the ability that it gives us to achieve unbelievable visuals. And sometimes it takes us away from the narrative and the storytelling, you know. And uh, when you're starting out, you get carried away with that, you know. Now it's become part of our lives, you know. So we're not that fascinated by that whole aspect. And it, like Vikram was rightly saying, it's like a, it's a, it's a great tool. It's like your script writer or like your, you know, editor or any HOD, you know. And uh, it helps you achieve that vision within the confines of the, uh, you know, the, the story. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it's great that it's become part of our life, you know, so we don't get enamored by what are the possibilities and just use it for a, for a, for a narrative, you know, all that. You know? Yeah, so I'm saying, uh, going back to those times where you had to do a lot of pre-planning and going, coming to these times where you have Unreal, you have uh, Unity, uh, you know, you can actually do a lot of previous preparation for it. See, previous. So, how does it? How do you think about filmmaking now? No, I That's think it's I great. Know. I mean, I think that previous is very, very important. You know, and uh, Pankaj uh, uh, introduced me to previous previsualization. I think uh, Doom was one of the first. Doom one was one of the first few movies that uh, did the previsual uh, previsualization. So, uh, Pankaj really introduced me to that. Uh, who's now, you know, along with Harry running uh, uh, Yashraj. So, uh, I think it's, uh, it's absolutely necessary, you know, and it just helps not only the filmmaker get clarity as to what he's saying and trying to achieve, but a VFX shot or a sequence has got every department a part of it, you know. So, a VFX oriented story or a VFX oriented shot can go wrong at so many levels, you know. The costume needs to be right, the emotion obviously needs to be right, the narrative needs to be right, the production design needs to be right, the lighting needs to be right. The, even the color of the green actually we get it wrong till today, you know, the green and the blue is also all rubbish in India. But uh, even that needs to be right, you know. And that's when the artist can really achieve those high levels of international uh, this thing. What happens is that we just shoot it ad hoc, you know. Till today, we sh shoot it quite ad hoc, you know. And then they expect the VFX to be, oh, why is it not looking like Top Gun, you know. <laughs> you know? And why is that helicopter looking like that in some movie or something like that, you know. But, you know, they, they go through a certain visualization, you know, uh, process, the pre-production process, which is uh, uh, not there over here. You know, I, I guess it's all money related, you know, because if the producer, the producer side of me is not seeing any return of it immediately on, on, on the frame, I'm like, what the hell is going on since one year, you know, like Tom Cruise preps for a stunt for one year and then finally jumps off the cliff, you know. If... I propose within my own company, you know, to my production people that, okay, I want to just pre-visualize for one year. They'll think I've gone mad, you know. And if I have actor dates and this and that, and I say, no, I'll just pre-visualize for one year. You know. 
and sit down with the DOP and, you know, uh, you know, sit down with the uh, production design, this and that, you know, and actually pre-visualize all your main set pieces and this and that. That's how it should be done, actually, you know, where you have everybody on board for over a year, when you want to make these kind of massive movies, you know. That's why, uh, you know, Tenant is shot faster than Brahmastra, you know, the number of days on Tenant or the number of days on even Dark Knight will probably be less than the number of days of shooting for Brahmastra or, uh, you know, many Indian films, you know, which are VFX oriented. Because of the prep, I guess, you know. Uh, and that is very important and that understanding, uh, today I'm more in a producerial role, a showrunner role. Uh, I try and give that to my uh, directors and my creative people. Uh, but I don't get it from the studio yet. So, <laughs> it's a bit of a struggle oh, so you're over doing there. digital series now. Is that, yeah. you're doing the OTT and the streaming services series. Uh -huh. yeah. So, with OTT streamers coming in, uh, uh, are you also thinking differently uh, in your productions? Or are you thinking the same as earlier? See, with OTT, uh, uh, we do a lot of prep for even a normal drama series, you know. So, if I do a PPM with my studio or a platform, it's a 500 slide PPM, you know. So, I like to, uh, you know, do a lot of prep and a lot of directors get irritated by it also. But, uh, especially people who are seasoned and know what they want to do when they go on set. But I'm not a big believer in that. I'm a believer in trying to do as much as prep as possible so that within that same amount, I as a production house can give far more value uh, to that frame, to that uh, studio, to that, uh, to that platform than other people uh, do. Uh, it's only because of the uh, preparation that we, uh, you know, try and do, you know, uh, way before we actually uh, get into even actor readings, you know. So, uh, Yes, uh, this came from mistakes because you got to learn it the hard way. And uh, I will not, I will, I have actually turned down uh, projects with platforms asking me to do it immediately, but there's not enough time for prep. I'm like, I can't do it. I will, I will lose money on it, you know, and it will not look that great also. So, uh, also, very strategically, we, we do medium-sized, mid-sized projects, you know, we have not been doing uh, very high-end uh, production budget-wise, but trying to give it the look and feel of any other big budget stuff. So, actually, this time is not bad for us, you know, because… Yeah, but uh, is your uh, thinking different in terms of, you do preparation anyway, yeah. but… You're saying, you're saying from, the, uh, from, a, from a story perspective? From a story perspective, from a oh, yes. creative perspective, from the subject perspective, absolutely, from absolutely. the concept. No, see, there is a, a far more restless audience watching it on uh, a streaming uh, device or a platform. And uh, you've got to uh, keep that attention, unlike a cinema hall, which is like you've gone there for that, you know, and you've allowed yourself to go into this dark theater uh, room and, you know, you're seeing this big screen and you're committed to the process, you know. Uh, so you can have a different kind of a narrative going on over there, you know, where you can take it from A to B to C and keep on moving, moving forward. Unlike that, uh, on, an, uh, on, an, on, a, on a streaming content, it needs to be far more, uh, you know, engaging. Uh, the narrative also is, uh, changing. Uh, it's actually a little old school uh, masala Hindi film. Uh, where we used to, we were trained to give a twist or something, some event in every reel when so we were basically broken. call it the hook or the yeah. So the I still I still break it down in reels. So eight episodes, eight reels, and you know what is the beginning of my reel, what is the ending of my reel, and how does the narrative change in the in the middle? And I think that is very very important to keep that younger audience uh, engaged. I see that being uh, uh, followed even in cinema now. You see the successful uh, two movies, which is uh, Drishyam and Pathan. They have a very OTT kind of language. It's almost like watching one big episode on screen, you know. Uh, Pathan has three, four episodes. Uh, so there's always a constant, okay, don't go to sleep. Watch me now, watch me, watch me kind of a thing. It's calling you constantly, you know. I saw that even in Drishyam too, you know, the uh, cold open and the way it got you into the film, you know. 
uh, I think the movies that have not worked have uh, a little bit uh, before pre-pandemic movies which were made then. So the narrative was a little different. Now the audience has changed. They're used to a certain narrative style which is reflecting in cinema as well. Fantastic.